Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my play for Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. If you guys are enjoying the series, do drop a like. Let's continue where we left off here. So the investigation now. April 18, 120 p.m. Write anything. Agency. Having a yokai testify in court is unprecedented to say the least. I am Tenma Taro, the yokai you seek. How could such a straight, a laced man like Mr. Tenma suddenly become a demon? Yeah, it's strange. Even worse, Prosecutor Blackwell is playing along. Ugh, <sighs> I can't even think straight anymore. I need to go out for a run. See you in a bit. Wait, what about the... Investigation. Back. Eek! Whoa! Oh, tru Trucy, welcome back. Oh, you're, uh, you're in your stage outfit. Back from work? Yep, I really nailed this new magic trick I've been working on. I also heard about those tricks that were conjured up in court earlier today. You know, the demon out of nowhere trick and Polly's tightrope, uh, style defense trick. I was seriously considering a disappearing act of my own after all the craziness. Anyway, our next trick is to find a suspect other than the mayor. I know the killer must have used the air duct in their escape. And whoever did that was the uh, Tenma Taro that Mr. Filch and Jinxie saw. Right, maybe there's some evidence in the air duct. The real fight starts right now. Hey, before you go, let me make the, uh, the evidence you no longer need disappear. Three, two, one. Ta-da! Unnecessary evidence has disappeared into Trucy's magic panties. Wonder where all that uh, stuff goes. Okay, let's get over to the scene of the crime. Uh, vamanos, Apollo, vamanos. Uh, that means let's go in Spanish. April 18, QB Manor. Fox, uh, chamber. Detective Fulbright, mind if we search the air duct? Well... Uh, since you, uh, really are on the side of justice, I suppose I can let you. Plus, my own sense of justice has been called into doubt, so... Wonder if he's been like this ever since the trial. Well, his sense of justice has to be beaten to a pulp. It'll probably take a while for him to recover. I sort of feel bad for him, but we have work to do. Let's get the evidence we need. The air duct is the key. We know the Tenma Taro impersonator used it to make the escape. After murdering the Alderman, the killer left the fox chamber through the hallway door. Then after locking the door from the outside, the killer entered the air duct in the hallway. Finally, the killer dropped the key into the fox chamber through the air vent here. Then went back through the duct and flooded the mare. That's how the illusion of, of no one um, entering or leaving the locked room was created. If the killer passed through the air duct, maybe we'll find some evidence there. Yeah, maybe some black fe uh, feathers or something like that. Well, here's our vent. It's awfully high up. Don't worry, I bought a step ladder. Happy hunting. Oh, the step ladder. That that's that's a that's a meme in the Ace Attorney community, and I like I like how the developers are playing along with it too. Uh, how nice of her to volunteer me for the job. Whoa, it's pitch black in here. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> There's a thick layer of dust in here. I don't get it. Find anything? Yikes, Apollo, what happened? You're covered in dust. Yeah, dust. Lots of dust. So what'd you find? You know how dust collects on something when nobody uses it for a long time? Yeah, like Mr. Wright's desk back at the office? Right. You think it'd be possible to crawl over that sort of dust without leaving a trail? I seriously doubt it. Wait, you're not suggesting... No one's, uh, uh, gone through the duct, that duct lately? Kinda looks that way. And if it's true, Mayor Tenma is gonna be fingered as a killer. But, but, but... If we don't turn things around quickly... Injustice we trust! Ack. Ah. Uh, sorry, Mr. Justice. But it seems your justice was not the most just after all. It's my sense of justice that has prevailed. 
Uh oh. Detective Fulbright sir seems chipper all of a sudden. Oh, and I'm back to my old uh, devastated self. Oh, come on. Where's that never say die spirit? Bring it on, Mr. Lawyer Man. Bring it on. Let me suffer in peace. Oh, justice prevails once more. It's not over yet. And besides, kicking someone when they're down is what bad guys do. Fuck. Are, are you calling me a, a, a bad guy? Me, Bobby Fulbright, champion of justice. Then how about some information on the investigation? We need some help here. Information about the investigation. All right, but I won't have you calling me a bad guy ever again. Understood? We did it, Apollo. Yeah, but how long can we keep this up? So if nobody's been the duck, is my is my initial theory correct then? Does that mean that so he, he instead just threw the coin in the duct and it just rolled down? Is that what it is? Because that's what I think happened. He probably threw the coin in and it probably the rolled through the duct into the room. Investigation. I can't believe Prosecutor Blackwell would stoop that low. I mean, depending the blame on a yokai, he really wants a conviction at all costs. She could give a yokai a run for its money when she's mad. Yes, well, I have him writing a self-reflective essay as we speak. I doubt that'll teach him anything. Yeah, he'll probably just write dotard a thousand times. That whole yokai business is most likely a ploy to win a conviction. Proof is, Prosecutor Blackwell believes Jinxie Tenma planted that yokai stuff. Planted it in an effort to protect her father, the real killer. Yeah, right, I'd like to see him prove it. Whoa, calm down. He doesn't have any direct evidence, but we did find this. It was at the base of the cliff just outside QB Manor. Wait, that isn't the staff Tenma Taro is supposedly carrying, is it? The one and only. Miss Tenma no doubt tossed it over uh, the cliff when she was done. No way. Well, what about the what about the prince? Nope, no prince. But if she was wearing a costume, there wouldn't be any anyways. Well, prince or no prince, it's not going to work in our favor. Sounds like the staff might have belonged to the mansion. But if that's the case... Then where in the mansion did Tenma Taro get it from? I'm starting to think maybe the staff is like a key. Did Prosecutor Blackwell figure out that the victim was the Amazing Ninetales? He did indeed. He's a sharp one, all right. He figured it out while investigating the municipal merger in the victim's past. The Amazing Ninetales sparked the yokai craze and worked against the merger. And married Damien Tenma is the corrupt politician who murdered that uh, great hero. The Amazing Ninetales fans are so angry, they even tried to storm the detention center. I don't blame them. I mean, their favorite mass wrestling hero was murdered. They must have been shocked when they found out what happened. Speaking of which, isn't Jinxie also a fan of the Amazing Ninetales? A wrestler's mask is more precious than his own life. He never unmasked himself in front of others. But there are matches where wrestlers battle for the right to remove each other's masks. To have your mask torn off is the worst humiliation a wrestler could suffer. That's why their masks are more important to them than their life itself. He spoke with a passion that only a fan could appreciate. We ought to become fans ourselves and go pro protest in front of the prison. <laughs> what? No. Did you forget that Mayor Tenma is not only Jinxie's father, but our client? Oh, yeah. You be careful now. You're defending the most hated uh, mayor in history. I just hope you don't find yourself on the wrong end of a figure four leg lock. Maybe I should wear a mask to hide my identity. Are there any other new developments we should know? Hmm. Now that you mention it, our suspect is suffering partial memory loss, but he did manage to remember something. He did? What did he say? He said he didn't want to speak with us. His exact words were, I am under no obligation to speak with you mortals. And other things of that nature. I wonder what Mayor Tenma remembered. Too bad you can't go ask him now, because Prosecutor Blackwell's busy questioning him. I know. Why don't you wait down at the playground with the rest of the kids? Ha ha ha. What now, Apollo? 
How about regrouping back at the agency? Good idea. We might get some words of wisdom out of Mr. Wright uh, while we're there. So this is like a massive improvement in Dual Destinies. I like it how you can actually choose from a list of where to go. Where like in the previous games, it was like you had to go to the specific section to get to the other section. It was it was a bit frustrating. Um, oh, where are we going? Right, anything you can see. Yeah, let's go see Mr. Wright. April 18th, uh, write anything, agency. Maybe I'll go read over some past cases. And I'll go do some research on exorcisms. <laughs> hey, what's with you guys? You seem bummed out. How should I put this? It's like we're at the edge of a cliff and the only way is down. In other words, business as usual, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Except this time it's like we're bound and gagged too. Don't forget blindfold with our ears uh, plugged up. Oh, and monsters at every turn, huh? Sounds rough. Hey, Apollo. Oh, and Athena's here, too. Mr. Wright. How goes the investigation, Apollo, Athena? I think it's safe to say that things have gotten hairier than before. Really? What happened? Our defense. I was watching the two of you this morning from the gallery. That was one tough day in court, to say the least. I know, I never had to defend a yokai before. That business about the locked room was another major hurdle. Yeah, and on top of that, Jinxie was accused of being an accomplice. But at least you figured out how someone could have escaped that locked room. Yeah, well, we just found out that our reasoning might be a tad flawed. Oh, really? Well, that's bad news. How are we going to get out of this one? The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. Force a smile. Yeah, my mentor taught me that back when I was still learning the trade. She also taught me to return to the basics whenever I got stuck. So he's talking about Mia Fey. Uh, she was a character, um, basically his um, uh, his teacher, um, his first boss. She was murdered in the second case in the game. Return to the basics? That's right. Always believe in your client. No matter what happens. That is a lawyer's greatest and most trusted weapon. The basics. Always believe in your client, huh? You and Athena. So, Mr. Wright, how long have you known Athena? I met her during a trip to Europe. Huh? Y you were in Europe? Why haven't I heard about this before? Yeah, I went there a few times to study the various legal systems over there. Oh, okay. Er, wait a minute. I thought you worked as a pianist after you quit practicing law. I did, but an old friend of mine needed help with some legal work from time to time, so... Oh, I guess you were never very far from the courtroom then. It was like fate brought us together. It's thanks to Mr. Wright that I became a lawyer at all. Haha, <laughs> I knew she was a lawyer material from the moment I met her. And I have high hopes for her ability to analyze people's emotions. Ah, uh, it's nothing of a special. Maybe I've underestimated that analytical psychology of hers. It's just I thought that if my special ability can help defend innocent people, then I had to do everything in my power to bring it to the courtroom. That's when I really started hitting the books hard. I'm still amazed she actually became a lawyer. And at the tender age of 18, no less. Wow, that's almost superhuman. Yeah, so there's no such thing as a lawyer at 18, no such thing as a prosecutor at age 17. Uh, or personal, like she's... Uh, Trying to help some uh, buddy she knows. All right, I'm totally pumped up after talking to you, Mr. Wright. It's like you said, uh, the worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. And don't forget to return to the basics whenever you get stuck. Keep believing in my client, right? Uh, Mr. Wright, yes. I'm, I'm going to visit our client again. I think that's a good idea. All right, trying to see what's new down at the detention center. April 18, Detention Center. Visitor's Room. Mayor Tenma, we wanted to talk to you about something. God, oh, God, 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 God. So my minions have returned. Apollo, he still thinks he's a yokai. I wonder if we'll ever be able to talk to Mayor Tenma again. Silence, peddler of the legal trade. Free me from these imprisoning walls with great haste. Wow. 
He's sounding more and more like a real demon with every sentence. I'm starting to wonder if we should ever even be helping him win his freedom. Still, we can't let Mayor Tenma stay possessed, you know what I mean. If you can clear if you can clear me of these charges, I shall help in whatever manner I may. Now ask of me what you will. I suppose it's worth a shot. Feathers and tracks. Were those feathers and tracks at the scene of the crime really you're doing? Indeed! The remnants of Tenma Taro, king of the underworld they be. The day when I once again dominate the mortal world is at hand. Ka 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 ka. The prosecution claims the feathers and tracks were planted by Jinxi. What's this? Yeah, so he's faking it. I must breach these walls and go defend little Jinxi at once. Huh? Mayor Tenma, is that you? Grr. Well now, Dam Damien appears to reside within this body. But I should have expected as much, a descendant of mine. Be silent now, Damien. Guess a little thing like demonic possession won't stop a father's love for his daughter. You didn't kill Alderman Kyuubi, did you? I have killed no one. The remnants of my uh, presence have been misconstructed. The murderer is not I. For if I had slain that mortal, raging hellfire would have consumed him. Yikes. So, so, so... You're saying there must have been somebody else there. Some to think of it, the mayor had mentioned that he'd been clubbed with this statue. I better ask about this too. What you remembered. Detective Fulbright mentioned that you might have something new to tell me. Indeed I have. I re regurgitated this key, but a short while ago. Behold, the key to the forbidden chamber. Whoa, is regurgitation one of your demonic powers too? Bah! I do not waste my powers on such parlor tricks. Take the key from the killer, uh, did Damien, whereupon he swallowed it. He sought to bar the killer entry to the forbidden chamber. So, he wanted to keep it shut tight. But no fingerprints shall you find upon that key. How do you know that? Wait, is that another one of your d demonic powers then? Foolish mortal, you would have me, Ted Matero, act as some asinine alchemist. I but asked the jailer, and my will was done. Quite eagerly, I must add. Ka 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 ka. Always an honor to serve your malevolence. Guess I'm not the only one who uh, he scares the living daylights out of. Um, can we ask how you use this key? We couldn't find a keyhole anywhere in or around the door. Curse that infernal door. But if I had known it's a matter of opening long, long ago, would I have made my return? He has a point there. Maybe Jinxie knows something about how the whole thing works. Forbidden Chamber Key, the key that the mayor took from the killer and swallowed. Um, the key the mayor took from the killer and swallowed. No fingerprints could be found. Why did he swallow it? Yeah, he's definitely pretending to be possessed. Um... The, the town then. We're, 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 we're trying to find Jinxie. Where is Jinxie right now? Um, hmm. Let me present this, the statue here. What might I ask is that? This statue was found at the scene. Someone hit Mayor Tenma over the head with it. It had been wrapped in a large cloth before the Alderman's murder. Let me see whether Damien knows anything about such a thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, something wrapped in just such a cloth does he recall. A secret gift from Alderman QB it would seem. He, however, not had, had not a chance to see it now for the cloth had conceal it. Maybe the cloth fell off or was removed after the mayor was struck. Mm -hmm. Of that, Damien does not know. Secret gift. Interesting. Maybe Jixie knows something about it. I should question him about the blackmail letter, too. Let's see what he says when I show it to him. Alright, the blackmail letter. Forgot about that. Why this? 
That is that accursed blackmail letter that was sent to Damien. Apparently, somebody slipped it into the alderman's pocket. We believe someone, probably the killer, stole it from Mayor Tenwa's briefcase. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Go, 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 go. You have questions, do you? Very well, ask away, mortal. Who placed this in the alderman's pocket? <clears throat> Very few were uh, they who knew the letter was in Damien's briefcase. So whoever knew about the blackmail letter being in the mayor's briefcase is a potential suspect in its theft and placement in the alderman's pocket. Ah, could it have been his doing? Mr. Mayor, uh, I mean Mr. Taro, did you just remember something? Indeed I did. There was but one other who knew of that letter. Damien's aide, Florent LaBelle. Full knowledge of that briefcase contents that aide possesses. And it may be the blackmailer and the murderer we're looking for. That is preposterous. He's the most trusted advisor. He would never betray Damien. But he did. He is the murderer. Seems like Mayor Tenma is a bit too trusting of, of those around him. Still, this is huge. Now we know who might have slipped that blackmail letter in the alderman's pocket. Look out, Florent LaBelle. Here comes justice. Let's go find Mr. LaBelle and rake him over the coals. Thanks for the help. You're just giving us a major lead. Highly likely it was LaBelle who took it from the mayor's briefcase. Hmm. There's something that still bothers me. If Mr. LaBelle is the killer, what could have motivated him to open the forbidden chamber? We should probably uh, search it for clues. Only one problem. How do you open a locked door that doesn't have a keyhole? Let's go talk to Jinxie. Maybe she can help. Nine Tails Veil, Yokai Lane. Hey, isn't that... Oh, there she is. What's wrong with her, girl? You dare imprison me? Jinxie. She's acting really strange. That loathsome, no good Nine Tails Fox. He shall know the terror that is mine in despair. Grr, grr. You shall pay. Oh, you shall pay dearly. All of you. Jinxie, are you alright? Eek. Ah. Oh, is that you, Mr. Demon Lawyer? Morning, Jinxie. Morning, isn't it already past noon? And what am I doing here? Uh, last I remember, I lay down to take a nap back at the manor. Oh no, it must have been the Mac Macara Geishi. Macara Geishi? Ever wake after a restless night's sleep to find your pillow in an unusual place? Or that you've been uh, sleeping on the floor or in the hallway? Well, it's that yokai's fault. That Macara Geishi preys on people while they're asleep. Sounds like you just need to be tucked in really tight or maybe a snug sleeping bag. Jinxie, how come you, you don't have any charms on your forehead? I don't? Oh, they must have fallen off. Without them, evil things can creep into me. They say uh, uh, we had a more than adequate demonstration of that just now. I'd better reapply them. Jinxie, there's also something we wanted to ask you. Ah, uh, there was something I wanted to tell you too. I, I remembered something else. You did. What was it? What you remember. Jinxie, can you tell us what you remembered? Well, after the trial, I remembered lots of stuff. But there was one thing I thought was really weird. I'm almost afraid to ask, but here goes. Really what? Um, it's about the yokai feathers and tracks. They weren't there when I first opened the door. What? Wait, what? Are you sure? Uh-huh, my memory's crystal clear now. So you're saying they were left at the crime scene after you found it. Why? This could spell major trouble, Apollo. Why? Because Jinxie's already accused of leaving the feathers and tracks at the scene. If they weren't there when she discovered the crime scene, it will totally fuel the claim that she fabricated the evidence later on. Ugh! Dixie's fuzzy memory of the whole incident is really working against us. The prosecution will probably say she doesn't remember planting the evidence. Good luck rebutting that. Oh man, this is not good. 
But the prosecution doesn't really have any evidence that she planted it. I sure, uh, I mean, the only thing they have is that she was in the area at the time, like she entered the room, but there, that's really not direct evidence that, the, that she planted anything. That's, that's more circumstantial evidence, because circumstantial, what circumstantial evidence is, circumstantial evidence is evidence that suggests that somebody is possibly guilty, but it's not direct evidence. So you can convict somebody on circumstantial evidence alone, but it's usually very, very hard. Like, an example of circumstantial evidence might be, like, you were in the same neighborhood as the killer. Like and you and you had like and you knew the killer or something or you were you were in the same neighborhood as the victim for example like something like that like you were in the area like you know somebody seen you there like that's that's like circumstantial it's not direct evidence that you killed the person but it is evidence to suggest that you had something to do with it I sure hope she didn't plant that evidence while she was sleepwalking or something the forbidden chamber Jinxie you wouldn't happen to know how to open the forbidden chamber would you that door doesn't even have a keyhole well it, it's supposed to have a secret mechanism. They say you have to figure it out before the keyhole will appear. Secret mechanism, really? Uh-huh. It's hidden in the fox chamber. But only Alderman Cuby knew what it was and how it worked. The Alderman of Nine Tails Vale sure loved his secrets. Apollo. Let's go see if we can find that secret mechanism. Whoa. Slow down. There's something else I need to ask about. Dinksy, Is there only one key to the Forbidden Chamber? Uh-huh. Even the manor's master key won't open it. That's because it's a very special room. That must never be opened. Guess that means nobody entered the Forbidden Chamber after the murder. After all, we know Mayor Tenma took the key from the killer and swallowed it, so... So the mayor's efforts to keep the killer out of the Forbidden Chamber... We're not in vain. The key that the mayor took uh, uh, from the killer and swallowed. Uh, there's only one of its kind. Forbidden Chamber key updated in the court record, okay. Just as needs backup sometimes too. So I don't mind you asking for help, but you should start by making things over yourself. After all, the road to justice starts with your own first step. Ha ha ha. If you don't have any information to offer, you could just say so. Okay, hang on. What's this? A, a, su, a Sukamogami? Sukogami? Yokai didn't have its objects that have been used for a really long time. The Red Demon and the Su uh, Suko Mogami. What a strange combination. Is everything to hear some supernatural phenomenon? I saw him, Tenma Taro. It's, it's nearly scared me to death. Do you see a lot of monsters, Jinxie? Uh huh. In fact, I encountered the Su Sunika Shori this morning, shivers. Sunika Shori. You know, I don't know what that, uh, that one. Tell me about it. It's a mean little beast that trips you by bumping into your, um, shins. I keep tripping all the time because of that pesky little thing. When it gets really bad, I, I stick, a uh, Sunika Kashori, uh, warning charms on my shins. Um, how about investigating some shin guards and watching your, your step instead? So, um, uh, here's what I'll tell you guys, um, the human mind is extremely complex, and the human mind can imagine all sorts of things, especially when a person is scared, like really scared, fear can create hallucinations, and very much can. Uh, so like she's experiencing all these hallucinations, all these monsters and demons, because he's just, she's just scared. She's under a lot of stress, especially she, you know, she saw a brutal murder, her father's being accused of the murder. Um, when I was actually a kid, um, uh, when I was like maybe like 9, 10 years old, um, uh, the, the apartment that I had lived with my family in, we had this, like, really creaky floor in the kitchen. And what happened is, whenever, you know, anybody was walking in the kitchen, from my room, I would always hear it. I would always hear the creaking noise as somebody was, like, in the kitchen. And what happened is, um, you know, the kitchen would basically lead directly to my room. And when I was a kid, and, and I was, like, trying to go to sleep, I would hear that crickety, um, crick, crickety noise, like somebody's coming towards my bedroom. And it was because I had a panic. I was scared. I was constantly scared when I was a kid that somebody was going to break in the house. I just had, like, a, a fear of that. 
I was just constantly scared of that, and I constantly heard that creaking sound over and over and over again. And I would ask my mom and dad, and my mom and dad would tell me there is no creaking sound, nobody's in the kitchen, nothing said. So it was basically my mind playing tricks on me just because I was so scared. And how eventually I got over it is I said to myself, there's nobody in the kitchen, nobody is trying to, you know, creep up to my room, none of that is happening. And eventually, when I got over the fear, it just, I stopped hearing that. So, the human mind is just very complex, and even when you're scared, uh, you can definitely create hallucinations for you. Uh, let me see here, uh... Can I... Oliver Kyuubi made that statue, it's a token of goodwill. I think it meant- it was meant to be for Ninetales Vale on Tenma Town. Token of goodwill, but the two yokai are fighting. Fighting? Oh, I see what you mean. The cup portion is missing. Cup portion? The statue... Originally depicted the two yokai holding up a cup in a celebration. But it sure doesn't look that way now, does it? A cup, huh? Maybe it broke when it was used to hit Meritano on the head. That would explain it. I guess the only uh, two people who know what, what it really looked like were the Alderman and I. Now it's just me, but its symbol of goodwill will be forever etched in my mind. The token of goodwill made in Secret Jinxie is now the only one who knows what the original looked like. A two pages. So that's how we're probably going to end up getting the killer. Because he's going to know what the statue looked like. We're going to probably trick him some way like that. So, is there anything else we should know about Jinxie? No. That- that's about it. Oh, no. Ah, my bracelet's reacting. Jinxie, you wouldn't happen to be- In just as we trust! Oh, no, what are you doing here, you idiot? Eek, a ghost! Ah! Detective Fulbright, what are you doing here? I have business with this young lady, if you must know. Prosecutor Blackwell has asked me to question her. Question- question me? Sorry, not interested. Are you here to ask about that whole yokai affair? That's right, specifically you wanna ask. Oh, but I can't tell you that now, can I? Ha 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 Oh, come on, please, we're partners in justice, right? No, no. Prosecutor Blackwell specifically told me my questions were of the utmost justice. I will not fall for your lies and justice we trust. The Twisted Samurai sure has him on a short lease. So you're not a ghost. Maybe some sort of uh, urban troll then. Now, come along with Tenma to the station with you. Oh, great. So yeah, so he took her away. So whenever you get like that, that black and white, you know, effect really qu uh, quickly, and Apollo's bracelet is going off, means the person's lying. They're hiding something. So she was hiding something. This is my chance to see what she was lying about. Well, at least we found out there's a secret mechanism for opening the chamber. Let's go check it out. I just hope they let us in now. April 18th. A QB Manor. Guarded. Oh no. And he changed his haircut. His hairstyle. He he, he had a blonde hair. Now it's now it's blue. Let me see if I can try to do a French accent. Oh, what an ab absolutely fabulous scent. I'm so glad I had these carnations imported from England. Nothing but the finest will do. Nah, I can't do it. it, it it's it's French accent is so much har harder to do. Uh, perhaps I should place one aside for our dearly departed alderman. Hey, it's Mr. LaBelle. Paula, let's ask him about you know what. Oh yeah, before we search the fox chamber, we should ask about the blackmail letter. Why, if it isn't the mayor's little lawyers, what do you want with me? Oh, um, there's something we wanted to ask. Where's that ringing coming from? You'll have to excuse me. Hello? LaBelle here. What the? Those things on his shoulders are, are cell phones? Yes, about that. You must forgive me. This whole matter with Mayor Tenma has been a complete nightmare. Where do you buy clothes like that? Ha <laughs> Surprised? This is my own special design. It's the ultimate in function of beauty. 
functional beauty. Are you sure about that? Looks a bit unwieldy to me. Ah! Ha ha ha! You simply don't have an eye for beauty. If anything, an eye for beauty means a looking like this guy rather be blind. So, what do you want with me? Did you see Ted Matero? Well, if Jinx and Mr. Filch said they saw Ted Matero. But what about you, Mr. LaBelle? You were in the foyer, why didn't you see? Ah! Ha ha ha. Very well, I admit it. That's right. I floor at LaBelle, saw the demon Ted Matero. Hmm. So he did see something. Then why did you lie about not seeing him? I was simply trying to protect dear little Jinxie. Protect Jinxie? What do you mean? Why, don't tell me you haven't heard of that strange uh, little habit of hers. Which one are we talking about? The one where she wanders around making mischief without knowing what she's doing. Rumor has it, she's possessed by Ten Matero. That one's new to me. Ha ha ha. Well, there you have it. Anytime you hear about a Tenma uh, tarot sighting, little Jinxie should be your prime suspect. Tell us more about that rumor. Rumor about Jinxie. So, what was that rumor about Jinxie? They say she's possessed. Not all the time, of course. It hits suddenly, then she starts wandering around doing strange things. Is, is that so? Although, come to think of it, she was doing that earlier. That loathsome, no-good, nine-tailed fox. He shall know the terror that is mine in despair. I don't think that she's possessed by a demon. I think that that I think that that LaBelle is messing with her. I think I think he's he did something to her. That certainly would explain how she was acting earlier. Once she even put on a Ten Matero costume and wandered around the woods at night. She did. Okay. Ugh, I wish I'd never asked. Does she remember anything while she's possessed? Unfortunately, no. She doesn't seem to remember a thing during these episodes. Memory lost during pose possession. Hmm. Come to think of it, her memory of the murder scene was quite fuzzy. Suppose that too was caused by her possession. Ah. Maybe. Uh. So, d you do understand. That whole yokai business was entirely of her own making. Now, wait a minute. Although, that yokai evidence wasn't there until after she discovered the crime scene. Did she leave those black feathers and strange tracks there herself? Apollo, let's ask Mayor Tadma about Jinxie's episodes next time we talk with him. I'm gonna present this to him. What is that? It's the blackmail letter, but it wasn't sent to Alderman Kyubi. It was sent to Mayor Tenma. And? Your point being? Someone took the letter from the Mayor's briefcase. And then placed it in the Alderman's pocket after he was murdered. Oh, you don't say. You wouldn't happen to be the one who made the switch, would you? After all, you're the only one who knew the blackmail letter was in the briefcase. So naturally you... Ah! Ha 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 ha. Perhaps that shot of cologne will make those sca scales fall from your eyes. Or my eyes fall from their sockets. Is it possible that you would like to frame me as a potential suspect? What would make you, you raise such an outrageous allegation in the first place? Um, uh, well... Ah ha ha ha. My only crime is being born as beautiful as you see here. In other words, you have nothing. Now... Let me show you, uh, what to do with this garbage. Ah, you can't destroy evidence like that. What do you mean I can't? I just did. Feel a little lighter now? You just won a one-way trip to the top of my most annoying people ever list, buddy. Are we done with your silly questions now? I'm a very busy man, you know. <sighs> I guess that's it for now. Hello, LaBelle speaking. Really? 
So here's the thing is a lawyer is not going to carry around evidence. Maybe they'll have like copies of evidence with them, but they're certainly not going to carry around evidence. You wish to carry my new product at your store. Oh, but I'm afraid it's my own private brand. It's not available to the public. What? Then I shouldn't um, advertise it on TV. But I don't understand. As the embodiment of beauty is my duty to announce my good looks to the world. Stop the bus. I'm getting off. Ha 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 ha. Everyone wants my exclusive Je Suisse Label pro uh, products. Uh, so, uh, so about, um, uh, about Le J. Suisse Label, that, that means in French, I am Label. Because J means I and Suisse means am. J. Suisse Label is the crown of my collection, born of my long, relentless pursuit of beauty. But now that it's become so popular, it's an absolute nightmare. You don't say. Well, they can't have it. It's just for me. It's not meant for you peasants. Peasants. This is my latest product. Calling it Collier Me Label. A dazzling hair color that you can wash out with just water. Guess that means you can't sweat. I have seven colors in, in all. You can find out more in my commercial and magazine ads. Yeah, it's not available to the public. Great sales strategy. They are genius. Come to think of it, Mr. Label. Your hair color's changed since the last time we met. Ha ha ha. The little lady here has quite a discerning eye. Here's a little sample. Consider it a gift from one who truly appreciates beauty. Oh, uh, hello. What should I do? Better take it before you get a face full of cologne. Good point. Wow, thanks, Mr. Lavelle. Hair color. Hair color that washes out with water. It's for Lavelle's own brand. It isn't available to the general public. Okay, let's head over to the Fox Chamber. We still gotta find a secret mechanism for opening the Forbidden Chamber. Yes, do you always go around sticking your hand in other people's faces? Oh no, I just wanted to show you this. Ah uh, yes, do you have something in that groomy paw of yours? But I only have eyes for things of beauty. Now, if you would excuse me. Yes, he'll only look at stuff that interests him. He destroyed the blackmail letter, it's gone. Dazzling hair color that you can wash out with water, isn't it magnificent? What if you start to sweat? Won't that wash the, the color out too? Ha ha ha. I assure you, Florent LaBelle's embodiment of beauty does not sweat. And what about rain? Even if you don't sweat, you never know when it might. Peasants like you fail to grasp the truth. Rain and other forces of nature draw back in all of my beauty. Sure, they're not being repelled back by your narcissism. April 18, QB Manor. Fox Chamber. Okay, let's find that secret mechanism for opening uh, the door. Oh, this is exciting. I can't wait to see how it works. But do you really think the killer entered the Forbidden Chamber? We'll just have to open it to find out. We should all, uh, also see if there was any, anywhere the killer could have hid in this room. Okay, let's get started. Up your eight, Apollo. Up your eight. I actually don't know what that means. Carving out the nine-tailed fox over the door and statues on either side. The way those two statues are glaring is like they're guarding the door from us. Come to think of it, there are two foxes on that folding screen as well. Can't be a coincidence, can it? That's what I thought. I thought that these, um... Hey, the statue moves. Don't get carried away now. I mean, who knows? It might trigger a trap. <laughs> I can handle it. If a spear comes shooting my way, I'll snatch it out, out of the air. After all, I have the reflexes of a regular karate kid. I guess if you can catch something that fast out of mid-air, you can accomplish anything. Still. There might be something to the fact that these fox statues rotate. Maybe there's something around here that shows the possible position they should be in. This here. 
Their tails should be towards each other. some water, but I don't think that would work in the door. Oh, I know. I'll break it down with a body slam. Uh, I don't think it's gonna work. Ha, <laughs> I seriously doubt you could do that. How do you know if I ha haven't even tried? No, wait, don't. Ah. As much as you hate losing, Athena, I think the door would win this match. Foxes standing back to back are depicted on this elegant folding screen. This has something to do with the keyhole. Hmm. Wait a minute. Two foxes. There are two fox statues in front of the forbidden chamber as well. Maybe the keyhole will appear if we do something uh, to the folding, folding screen. Hmm. But I don't see anything unusual about it. Well, it does have two foxes on it, and there are two fox statues in front of the door. Maybe there's a clue somewhere in this room. Let's turn the whole place upside down. He's as excited as a kid in a candy store. Okay, let's see. There's gotta be a hint in here somewhere. There's a cliff outside this window. Makes it pretty impossible to get out this way. When I hear things like that, it just makes me want to try. Never say never, right? I bet I could get out, out of this. <laughs> no, wait! Do you have a death wish or something? Disc, it won't even open wide enough for me to squeeze through. Guess I lost that bet. That loss has saved your life. Okay, uh... The key are those statues. Maybe the killer hid under this table. That would be a terrible hiding place. The alderman's body would have been right above. Hmm, maybe you're right. Guess the un underside is a bit... Wait, there's something under the table. Let's check it out. Oh. Hey, look. There's something down here. It looks like a piece of something. Only question a piece of what? It's a piece of the statue. I recognize it. Hmm, oh, I know. It might be a piece of the statue. Remember what Jinxie said. The statue originally depicted two yokai holding up a cup. It was a symbol of goodwill. So this piece broke off and rolled under the table. Okay. Fox and demon statue updated in the court record. How did the police miss that? Are they incompetent or something? Fulbright's got some explaining to do. He's gotta be an idiot or something. Well, I can't think of anywhere else to look. You find anything, Apollo? We'll never find a keyhole to the forbidden chamber at this rate. There's something about that folding screen. You know how those fox statues in front of the forbidden chamber move? That screen might be a clue as to how we're supposed to position them or something. Hey. I bet you're right. Let's go over that screen with a fine-tooth comb. On closer inspection, I think there's more to this screen than meets the eye. Let's check every last inch of it. I can rotate the folding screen with R, uh, up, left, or right, down, okay. If I spot anything of interest, I can press X to inspect it further. You can also zoom in and out with triangle and circle to get a better look. Now let's check every last inch of it. What's this? What's this? Oh, he says it too. Looks like a keyhole or something. You think it'd be a keyhole to the forbidden chamber? No, it's just a picture. Still, you know what they say. Pictures worth a thousand words. And this is the symbol of the key picture of a key. Hmm. That shape looks awfully familiar. Oh, I know. It's shaped like the Forbidden Chamber's key. Hmm. Wait, what about that keyhole drawn on the center of the screen? You think the two are related? A key and a, a keyhole. Oh, I just got an idea. If you fold the screen up just right, the key and the keyhole should overlap. Hey, I think you're right. Let's give it a try.
Look, a door. Yeah, and it's open, too. Two foxes are now facing each other, so... Hey, what if we made those fox statues face each other? Wow, I figured that out really quick. All I had to do was just look behind the screen. That was a really easy way to figure it out. Forbidden Chamber. You know, for, for, you know, you put a lot of work into the Forbidden Chamber. I cracked it so quickly. <laughs> uh, okay, help me move the two statues so they face each other just like down the screen. Oh, there it is. Look, a lock appeared. Now we can use that key. Okay, here goes nothing. I'm scared. What's in there? It worked. Time to see why this chamber is so forbidden. What secrets could it hold, I wonder? April 18, uh, QB uh, Manor. Forbidden ch uh, chamber. Okay, I'm scared what's in here. These doors need some serious oil. Ah! That was like nails on a chalkboard. All right, forget about those super good ears of yours. Look, more feathers. Eek! What the heck is that? Is that a Tenma Taro statue? But there's something odd about it. The staff, it has the staff. Look, the rings, the rings that are on the staff, those are the things that make the jingly sound. Ugh, all I know is I don't like it, but I can't explain why. You okay, Athena? You look kind of pale. You're not scared, are you? What of this thing? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> really? Hey, look. What, 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 what is it? Over there on the left, there's a bunch of st staves on that rack. Yep. They kind of look like the staff we saw earlier. And look, there's one missing from inside here. Look, the rack. There's one There's one not there. You mean the one Jinxie said she saw Tenma Taro carrying? Yeah, I bet our Tenma Taro impersonator really did come in here at some point. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's search the place. Okay. This is important. Hey, there's a bunch of staves here, and it looks like one's missing. Tenma Taro Jinxie saw must have taken it. I have to agree. Uh, these lo look like the one Detective Fulbright showed us. Why do you think there are so many here? Maybe they're spares. Tenma Taro might be, you know, absent-minded or something. But the fact that he has spare staves handy, well... It shows he's aware of his faults and is trying to deal with them. Or at least that's my take on it. Maybe this will remind her to deal with her own faults. But I won't hold my breath. So, this soundtrack in here, um, uh, if you listen to it, um, it's kind of creepy. It's like this gust of air that's constantly flowing through here. I think I know where this soundtrack is from. This is from Mega Man Legends 1. Because uh, Mega Man Legends 1, when you actually go into the ruins in that game, there's actually this kind of like sound of like this air blowing. And they Capcom has reused a lot of their um, uh, soundtracks before. There's actually one other Mega Man Legends soundtrack in this. Uh, the soundtrack for the police is used in the first Ace Attorney game when you're talking to that... Um, Talking to that lawyer, I forget his name, the one who was supposed to represent Maya, but then he decided not to because he was being blackmailed. Uh, this, that, this, a stone lantern. Like those Japanese garden lamps. Where's the switch? Lamps like these are lit by fire, not electricity, so there's no switch. Oh, here it is. What? It was hidden out of sight. I see Tenma Taro's cell has been outfitted with all the amenities a yokai could want. What is this? What's this? Whatever it is, the packaging is really, um, gutty. And the fact that there's no dust on it means it hasn't been here very long. Wait, is that the hair gel stuff? Oh, it's hand cream. Let's see what brand it is. Je suis la belle. La belle? What the? But then, wouldn't that mean Mr. La Belle was here? I guess so, but why? Well, whoever was dressed up like Ten Matero must have taken a staff from here in the Forbidden Chamber. And that same person probably dropped this hand cream at that time, while how sloppy LaBelle is. In other words, the Ten Matero impersonator we're looking for is none other than...
Florent LaBelle. This might be a big break for us in court tomorrow. Now all we have to do is get the truth out of Mayor Tenma. An item that was recently dropped in the Forbidden Chamber bears bears the J. Suisse LaBelle logo. That means I am LaBelle in uh, French. It's feathers. Black feathers. They look exactly like the ones in the Fox Chamber. That means the killer must have been in here at some point. The question is, why? Maybe. Maybe the Tenma Tarot costume was hidden in here, I mean. If someone carried it through the manor, it would have stuck out like a sore thumb. But when did the killer get in here? The mayor snatched the Forbidden Chamber key when the killer hit him on the head. That means the killer could have only gotten in here before the murder. Wow, this is one tough riddle, alright. What is this? Looks like an old scroll, and there's something drawn on it. Unless I'm mistaken, it looks like an old guy. Some sort of monk, maybe. A monk? What are you talking about? You know, people that take walks in the mountains to form a spiritual training. Wouldn't that just be a hiker? The guy in this picture doesn't look like he's doing this for fun, Athena. Hmm. Oh look, there's some yellow thing strapped to his back. What is that? Whoa, it's turning into Ten Matero. What's this scroll getting at? Is this how Ten Matero was born? Well, whatever it is, definitely creepy. Whoa, that's one big statue. Must be something like 15 feet tall. And look, this Tenma Taro has a staff. But the Tenma Taro and the scroll didn't have one. Hmm. I wonder why. I feel like this could be significant. But why? Why is the scroll... Let's take a closer look. First, to go around this table here. Ah, Apollo, are you sure that's a good idea? Hey, it looks like there's some sort of compartment in the base of the statue. Don't open it. Who knows what might be in there? Just a big empty compartment. And from all the dust and cobwebs, I'd say it hasn't been opened in a really long time. That's enough, Apollo. Let's shut it and... Wait, there is something in here. Looks like some sort of figure. Let me see here. What is that? But it's so dusty, I can't tell what it's supposed to be. What is that? Is that the old man? Wonder what it's doing here. Forbidden chamber figure. Figure that had been left inside the Tenmatero statue. A thick layer of dust and dirt suggested it has been there for some time. So, um... Yeah, this is, um... Ooh something else that we're not seeing in here. Looks like a gravestone or something. It reads, Here lies Tenmatero, age 80. Cause of death, choked on a chicken bone? Say it ain't so. Besides, that sounds more like an autopsy report than an ep ep epitaph, if you ask me. Wait, you're joking around because you're scared. It's your coping mechanism. Uh, I'm not so scared. Freak out central, right here, baby. Cut it out, widget. And I was strong in this one. This. It's an air vent. Oh, look. There's an air vent in here, too. Guess even forbidden chambers need proper ventilation. Hmm. I don't think anyone could reach this one, either. Yeah, and there's nothing to stand on around here. Wonder where this vent leads. Well, the fox chamber vent didn't branch this way, so... Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with this case, after all. Guess that about wraps it up. What now? should probably talk to some of the witnesses again. You mean like Mr. Filch and Jinxie? Yeah, I really want to ask Mr. Filch about the village superstitions at Tenma Taro. So, this is the ancient scroll of Tenma Taro. It doesn't have a, that, the staff. But this statue in the Forbidden Chamber does have the staff. So, what could that mean? What, what could that mean, I wonder? Why does a scroll have the statue, but... April 18, uh, QB Manor. Boyer. It's the curse! The, the curse of Ten Matero! 
Keek. <laughs> you outsiders are ignoring them superstitions at our peril. Mind your own business, will ya? <laughs> ah. You. Youch, what's that all about, curse? Wait, he took Widget. Look, he has Widget on his neck. Said Matero's gonna curse us all, let you uh, stop sticking your nose where it don't belong. Stop the investigation. Listen to what those superstitions say. Right. Um. How about obeying the law uh, before you go obeying the superstitions? Yeah, he took Widget. Huh? Hey, what are you doing with Widget around your neck? He's mine. You know better than going around stealing people's stuff like that. The same goes for my bracelet. Uh, sorry, I promise I won't do it again. Yes, he almost kidnapped my sweet little widget. That big jerk! I'm sorry. I guess you can't teach an old raccoon dog new tricks. As long as we have him here, I guess we should ask him about what happened. Stealing. I can't believe you did that. It's one thing to steal a pair of shoes, but to steal a widget? Grr. Yipes! Yikes, mercy, mercy! I can't seem to control myself. It's that thieving blood running in my veins. Thieving blood? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Glad you asked. The infamous bandit a Azuki Kozo was my grandpappy. Take a gander at this. What exactly am I looking at? Looks like another one of those yokai to me. Wait, that's his grandfather? Wait. Look! It's the same figure. It's none other than the Izuki Kozo, robbed from the rich to give to the poor he did. And he'd leave one of those fingers at the scene of the crime. What's more, I'm his grandson, because he was my grandpappy. Wow, you don't say. These honor, it's the honest truth. Ah, the sl slushing sound of Izuki beans scrapping together in the dead of night. It's the magical sound of dirty money getting washed clean for giving out to the poor. I'm Azuki Kozo, washer of money, giver outer of wealth, reborn. Forget the money, you should be washing yourself out of this nasty habit. Wait a second. This figure looks familiar. Yes, it looks like that old dusty figure we found in the Forbidden Chamber. Azuki Kozo figure. A figure discovered inside a Tadama Terrace, which apparently is something a certain thief leaves at the scene of a cry of a theft. Hey! What are you doing with that there figure? Oh, this? We found it in the Forbidden Chamber. Looks like it's been there practically forever. Hmm. It means my grandpappy broke into the Forbidden Chamber way back. Hey, that reminds me. He once told me there's treasure in that there chamber. Treasure. Forbidden Chamber treasure. So is that why LaBelle did it? He did it over the treasure? What do you know about the treasure in the Forbidden Chamber? <laughs> Only that is the greatest get-rich-quick uh, chance in the universe. Grandpappy told me all about it, said there's an amazing treasure in there. There's something amazing in there. Didn't see anything like that. No. Your grandfather didn't by any chance already steal it, did he? Seeing how there were only one of his figures in there, that just might be. Heh, <laughs> that's grandpappy for you. But he was washed that uh, treasure up real good before handing it out to the poor. Of course, because he was so right righteous. In court, you mentioned seeing Tenma Taro near the scene of the crime. Sorry, I, I didn't come clean right away, but them superstitions got the better of me. The people in uh, Ninetales Vale sure seem like superstitious bunch. I'm not surprised you wouldn't want to talk about that seeing Tenma Taro. Darn right, it, them superstitions scare me out of my wits, I tell you. That's why I'm gonna uh, do exactly what uh, they say from now on. So you plan on staying here in Ninetales Vale? Yep. I'm gonna be keep living right here, and keep with the old ways, just like Grandpappy did. Them superstitions are like a rubber rule book to me. Wait, so you're saying you actually believe in those old wives' tales? Ain't you been listening to a word I said? You're gonna do exactly, um, what them superstitions say? Well, I say that's baloney. immediate departure from the village this. Take that! It's clearly written right here. Ignoring the superstitions will cost you your soul. 
There is, however, one way to save it. Your immediate departure from the village. Ah! So according to this, you shouldn't even be here, let alone talking with us. You said you plan on staying right here in Ninetales Vale. But if you really believed in the superstitions, you would have been long gone by now. Ah! I know you've been lying to me. Time to come clean, Mr. Filch. Yipes! And Matero sighting. You were lying about believing in the superstitions, weren't you? Sorry, but I didn't have no choice. So what was the real reason why you couldn't talk about seeing Ten Matero? It's all that pretty boy's fault, Mr. LaBelle, if you know what I mean. He told me not to say a word uh, about seeing Ten Matero. Said if I, I did, he'd do to me what the superstitions said would happen. So it was Mr. LaBelle who muzzled you. Why would Mr. LaBelle want to scare you into silence? Mr. LaBelle was trying to protect that little maid gal. It was on account of that rumor, the one about her being possessed. That rumor again. I guess we really do have to talk to Mayor Tenma about the possession rumor. Ouch! Hey, watch it! Village superstition stolen by Phineas Filch. I'll be taking this back now. <laughs> Kinda like family to me. You could've just asked instead of stealing it. Was that all we wanted to ask Mr. Filch? Yeah, I think that was it. Let's go see Mr. T uh, Tenma Taro one more time. Just thinking about the dealing with that yokai again makes me want to say pass. So about this is, uh, he's a, he's a key witness at this point. We need to protect him. Okay, LaBelle. No one's here. Let's go back to the detention center. April 18th. Detention center. Visitor's room. Lord Tenwa, your attorneys are here to see you. Your, your malevolence. Um. Why are you speaking like that? Oh, Mayor Tenma, you've returned. Yes, well, Jinxie came by earlier to apply a new charm to my head. It seems to be suppressing the demon within me. That's a relief. Maybe we'll actually get somewhere this time. So, what can I do for you today? We'd like to ask about the rumor that Jinxie is possessed. Ah. She allegedly left a yokai evidence to the scene while under a demon's power. At least that's what the prosecution is going to claim at tomorrow's trial. <laughs> Huh? No match uh, is this warding charm for me. Oh my god, not this again. Uh, honestly, he is so faking this. Oh, the, the, the charm. Tenma Taro's back. Those foolish mortals, they shall regret blaming that child for my doings. Ah, uh, I blew it. That question brought that yokai back. And he probably won't drop that act until Jinxie's name is cleared either. Rumor about Jinxie. We'd like to ask you about something about your aide, Florent LaBelle mentioned. Did you know Jinxie is rumored to be possessed? I know not of what you speak. You're not trying to protect Jinxie, or- Oh, you're not trying to protect Jinxie, are you? I, Tenma Taro, demon lord at Yokai, protect a mere mortal. Ka -ka 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 -ka. No affections do I possess for your race of humans. Please, we already proved there was a third party disguised as a Yokai at the seat. But if you deny this tomorrow, we'll never be able to clear uh, Mayor Tenma's name. But I have already told you, I know not of what you speak. I don't think we'll get anything more out of him. It's all over unless we can somehow prove that Jinxie didn't plant that yokai evidence. Hey Apollo, I think I've got this one. I think I can prove that she didn't do it. Really? Sure. I should be able to use psychology to explain that whole possession thing. Knock yourself out then. Wow, Fina's really something. I can really count on her when it counts. The real story. Mayor Tenma, Jinxie isn't possessed. I believe her so-called possessions episodes are a form of some somnambulism. I I don't know what that is. If anybody in the comments knows what that is, let me know. Some some man is somnambulism. You mean sleepwalking? That's that's what that's the term for sleepwalking. Yes, I believe she's exhibiting a rare form of the disorder. It's usually brought up on by repre repressed stress. 
Mr. Mayor, didn't her symptoms start uh, soon after she began her jobs at Ninetales Vale? Hmm. When the child visited last, she did speak of dreading yokai and how they rob her of sleep each night. I knew it. That lack of sleep is causing her to enter an unconscious state. And that means she can't be trying to protect you, at least not on a conscious level. So then the Tenma Tarot that was spotted at the manor wasn't Jinxie. Sleepwalking, eh? Hmm. -mm. That would indeed explain the matter. Look, Tenma Tarot's spirit. It's left a mare's body. Can you tell us the truth now, Mayor Tenma? Very well. It's the least I could do for a superb exorcist such as you. Feathers and tracks. Mayor Tenma, you didn't leave those feathers and tracks at this scene, did you? I did not. Neither I nor Jinxie have anything to do with that. That was. The killer's doing, no doubt. I knew it. Uh, you suspect Florent is behind all this. But why? Did he really want Ninetales Veil that badly? Can you think of any reason why? Hmm. Look, looking back, he did seem fixated on Tenma Taro for a spell. Ah, could it be? Perhaps he was attempting to release Tenma Taro. That's crazy. Are you saying that Yokai is real? Whatever the case, Tenma Taro brings nothing but pain and misfortune. As the superstitions warn, you must not gaze upon him nor free him from his prison. But, but how can people actually believe that? Well, at least we know who's behind this whole Tenma Taro thing now. Yeah, I think we need to have another nice long chat with Mr. LaBelle. Your uh, dinner is ready, your malevolence. Ah, uh, an offering to the Demon King. You may place it right there. The kitchen crew poured their heart and soul into making it. Did they know? Souls happen to be a favorite of mine. Just hold the hearts next time. Ka -ka 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 -ka. Yeah, yes, your metal leverance, I'll remember that. He's so faking that. How long is he planning to keep up this yokai trade? Well, we've already talked to Mr. Filch and Mayor Tenma, so... Why don't we go see Florent LaBelle next, now that we know the truth? He won't be able to cha uh, claim that Tenma Taro was Jinxie or the Maris a anymore. But the real question is, how are we going to get him to admit it was him? April 18, QB Manor. Foyer. Okay. Okay. Let's practice that again. Filchy, from the top. Er, Mr. LaBelle... Mr. LaBelle was in the foyer at the time of the crime. And when we, uh... Heard a scream, uh... Ah, uh, heck. What was the next part again? Ah! Uh, you have the memory capacity of a flea. This is the third, uh, thirteenth time you know. Now, a hundred times, uh, more, and we're done. What on earth are they practicing? Ah, oh, I ain't cut out for this. Oopsie daisy. Oh! Oh, begging your pardon, Mr. Lavelle, sir. It's just uh, all this practice. Yipes. Unbelievable. What if you had sullied my outfit with those grubby paws of yours? Did Filch, uh, Filch La, uh, LaBelle's wallet just now? So, what do you think they're up to this time, Apollo? Hmm. Oh, it's you two. Eavesdropping, are you? Piff. You peasants are so tacky. Well, what do you want with me? Your confession being a ten Tenmo Taro imposter would be nice right about now. Taro's true identity. Mr. Filch filled me in on a conversation you two had. And about how you told him not to say a word about seeing Tenma Taro. Filch, you fool! I told you, nothing good would come of you running your mouth. Oh, why did you want to keep Mr. Filch quiet like that, Mr. Lavelle? Ha 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 ha. Why? To protect darling little Jinxie, of course. But Jinxie was never really possessed. She was sleepwalking. Being asleep at the time, she couldn't have been consciously trying to protect the mare. That also means she couldn't have possibly been Tenma Taro. Interesting. But where, where are you going with this? Since you asked so politely, I believe you have a different reason for trying to keep Mr. Filch quiet. 
That reason would be to deflect doubt away from the one who was really Tenma Taro. <laughs> now this is getting interesting. Are you insinuating that I'm Tenma Taro? So sorry to disappoint, but I'm nothing of the sort. That's right, Mr. LaBelle even told me Tenma Taro's a jinx. I said, Tenma Taro is jinxy. You fool. Honestly, you have the memory uh, capacity to flee. Practice it hundred uh, more times. Yipes! So, um, have you been called to testify tomorrow? Yes, and I'm so looking forward to my courtroom debut. But you'll just have to wait until then. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I'll be waiting. With a special piece of evidence I've, I've been saving just for you. Filthy! Wake up, you lazy bones. Huh? What? I, was I sleeping? Yawn. Must have been that sweet cologne of yours, Mr. LaBelle. Maybe r right sleepy it did. Well, it's time for your uh, your lesson on what to say tomorrow. Oh, I'm begging you, not another l lesson. I ain't cut out for the, uh, this thinking and remembering stuff. Ah! Right up the uh, schnozzle. Sh Keep quiet and do exactly as I say. No, please, anything but another lesson. There they go. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to get better at doing a French accent. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sound, sound like what I think all the characters would sound like. Uh, I think I kind of butchered the French accent, but I'll try to do my best. Because I know in French is like, um, yeah, it, 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 it. Yeah, in, in French, you don't pronounce the TH the same as you do in English. Missed our chance to get the truth out of him. Yeah, but we'll get the proof we need in court tomorrow, one way or another. All that's left now is that lie Jinxie told. We better go clear that up before tomorrow. You think they're done questioning Jinxie? Maybe. Let's see if she's over on, on Yokai Lane shopping for more charms. April 18. Nine Tails Veil. Yokai Lane. A cursed nine tail fox, the time for settling the score is nigh. Yeah, so she is definitely sleepwalking. My grudge has but festered over time. Last vengeance will be mine. Grr, grr. She must be possessed or sleepwalking again. Maybe if I speak softly, I won't startle her and get a, a charm plastered on my forehead. Psst, Jinxie. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Demon Lawyer. Ah, uh, my charms must have fallen off again. Phew, guess I can avoid a charm slap by toning down my cores of steel. Are they done questioning you, Jinxie? Uh-huh. And on the way back, I stopped here to buy a new charm that was just released. Yeah, which one? Oh, I'm the one with the nine-tailed fox and ten matero. It shows them dancing together. Really? Two better rivals dancing together? Uh-huh. It's a charm for rebuilding burnt bridges. All right. For the municipal merger issue. No, it's for the demon lawyer and the insomniac prosecutor. It'll stop, it'll stop you two from fighting like you did in court this morning. We weren't fighting, it was just a spirited debate. It's what we lawyers act. No fighting. Charm slapped again. Apollo, if you're done playing around, let's find out what she was lying about. What you remember. Yangtze, it seems like you're starting to remember things. You already said the feathers and tracks weren't there when you discovered the crime. Have you remembered anything else that seems important? Eek! L like what? Tell us what you saw that day. Maybe you'll remember something else this time. Eek! When I opened the door, Papa and Alderman QB were collapsed in the fox chamber. That's when Papa told me to call an ambulance and the police. That's all he said before he passed out in the chair. Yeah, she's lying about something. I knew it. She's holding something back. Receive. Okay, so I have to find something. Usually the face is the place where... The charm. 
goes, that's all he said before he passed out in the chair. He said something else. It's the charm. That's all he said. That's the lie. Gotcha! You were very nervous when you said, that's all he said. Weren't you? Yeah, sorry, my controller. I know because I saw your fingers move as, as you were going to slap someone with a charm. Huh? Listen to me, Jinxie. This is very important. Did Mayor Tenma say anything else to you? It, 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 it was nothing. He was just talking in his sleep. Talking in his sleep. So here's something that I remember. Is notice what, uh, notice what Filch said about the cologne. He said, your cologne is making me sleepy. I wonder if he knocked both uh, Meritenma and the Alderman QB out with the cologne. I wonder if he did that. Maybe he put something in the vent. So you admit that he did say something else. Eek! How could you tell? Only, only a demon could have such powers. What you remember. Get the truth now. Uh, uh... Like I said, he was just talking in his sleep. I mean, why else would Papa say something like that? Could you be a little more specific? Before he fainted, he said, Forgive me, Jinxie. I killed Alderman Kyuubi. He said, What? The mayor actually confessed to the crime. But he didn't do it. Why, why would he admit to it if he didn't do it? Why would he tell her he did it if he didn't do it? B but he he didn't mean it. He couldn't possibly have known what he was saying. He was probably possessed, or maybe he was in the middle of a nightmare. Nightmare. No, this is a nightmare. This is one statement I wish I'd never heard. What in the world are we going to do now? Return to the basics. That's right. Always believe in your client, uh, no matter what happens. That is the lawyer's greatest and most trusted weapon. R right. Just believe in my client, even if all I can see ahead is darkness and despair. Jinxie, does Prosecutor Blackwell know about your father's confession? I didn't mention it when he was questioning me. I mean, there's no way Papa's the killer. Why would the mayor confess like that? Yeah, and, and we know he didn't kill. We know he didn't kill the Alderman, because if you watch the first cutscene uh, that you see, it was LaBelle who did it. LaBelle was the one who stabbed him. We saw it happen. Could her he really be uh, have been dreaming or simply delirious? Who knows? But I sure feel like I'm, I'm in a living nightmare right now. Apollo, what are we uh, going to do about tomorrow's trial? The crime scene was locked tight until Jinxie arrived, and our clients even confessed. Not only that, Jinxie has been accused of planting the yokai evidence. Both the mayor and Jinxie are going to prison if we don't do something. I know, I know. Well, let's see here. Our lack of a third party in the locked room is a major problem. Jinxie has testified that when she first opened the door, Alderman QB and Mayor Tenma were the only people she saw in the Fox Chamber. But the real killer must have been hiding in there as well. Considering the room was locked tight, that's the only logical explanation. Our mystery, uh, person must have then fled the Fox Chamber when it was open. And that's when Jinxie saw what she fought was Ten Matero. But, but... Papa and the Aldermen were the only people there. I didn't see anyone else. What's going on here? The Bell's extremely pale, but he's far from transparent. So just how did he hide himself in the scene of the crime? Good question. Where was he hiding in that room? Whatever it takes in court tomorrow, Apollo. We have to take down that dirty, rotten Ten Matero Florent LaBelle. Right. We'll get him with a legal exorcism, justice style. Okay. So, I'm assuming it's gonna be the final part of the trial um, on the next one. So, I'll have the next part out for you guys as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this part. If you did, do drop a like. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.